Here are four of the 11 different models we now ship. They are all called basis derivatives, but some carry different model names depending on the I.O. configuration. Note that the only real difference is primarily audio connectivity. Does it have analog inputs or not? Does it have data ports or not? And so on. The top three in this screen are all 900 series models intended to connect to QSE amps that have data ports, while the bottom unit, a 522AA, has eight Euroblock outputs instead of data ports. That particular unit can send balanced line level audio to any amp or audio device. Of course, it won't monitor those amps, but the full control of the audio signal, levels, muting, and full DSP is available, along with the discrete control I.O. of the relays, logic I.O., and omniports. The middle two units have no analog inputs at all. Their data port outputs are being fed by Cobernet audio only, being received via the Cobernet connector on the far right. We also have a special adapter available called the DDI-11, which stands for Direct Data Port Interface Model 11, which can be attached to the data port to pull out the audio signals for some other amp or other audio device. So, for example, if you had three QSE CX amplifiers connected to data ports A, C, and D of the 922AZ, you could use the DDI-11 on port B to send audio to an assisted listening system and still have full processing and control of that audio. Let's talk model numbering for a moment. This will help you determine which features of which model you need for a particular application without having to look at a spec sheet. Sure, we could have named each model a unique name, like Panther or the Bobcat or the Puma and so on, like some auto, auto manufacturers do. But instead, we took a hint from some other auto manufacturers like BMW and Mercedes. The first number, the hundreds, tells you the feature set a particular model series has. A 2 in this location would mean it has Cobernet. A 3 is DSP. A 4 mean it has amplifier control and monitoring and therefore data ports. It is the sum of these numbers which give you the different model series. And like BMW or Mercedes, the 500 series has more features than the 300 series, and the 900 series has the most features of all. Remember that bottom unit on the previous screen? It was a 522AA, a 500 series device. The only way to get a 5 for that first digit would be to add 2 and 3 from this chart. Therefore, it has Cobernet and DSP. A 922, on the other hand, has to have all three features to yield a 9 for the first digit. The middle and last number tell us the number of analog inputs and analog outputs respectively. Now, a 922 doesn't have two inputs and two outputs. You have to multiply the middle and last numbers by four to get the actual number of I.O. channels. Why the multiplication, you ask? Well, it turns out, as we were designing the basis family of products, we came to the realization that it was going to cost us, and therefore cost you, this the same amount of money if we designed a circuit for one channel, for two channels, up to four channels. It has to do with the way IC chips are packaged. Usually four op amps are in one IC chip. It would take the same amount of printed circuit board space, the same power supply, the same filter caps, and so on, to design for a one channel device or a four channel device. It seems the natural channel increments were then multiples of four for both inputs and outputs. A convenient outcome of this is the fact that we could keep model designations very short from zero channels up to 36 channels. For example, we could build a basis with all of the features and provide 36 inputs and 36 outputs on one device. It would be a model 999, but would likely be unpopular because it would probably be 8 to 10 rack units tall just to accommodate all those I.O. connectors. In the beginning, when we were first developing the basis family of products, we mapped out over 70 different models. Pricing, market research, and common sense, however, showed that the 11 models we are currently making should suffice for nearly every conceivable system. 
The last two letters of the model name designate the type of I.O. that the model provides. The first letter in the pair relates to the inputs, while the set last letter relates to the outputs. With this full model designation scheme, you now need only five characters total to describe each and every unique basis derivative. Please note the font used for this presentation. In the I.O. block of this last block, that is an uppercase I, while in the fourth line of that little block is a lowercase L for XLR, line level connections, neither of which is the number one. Note two, that the letter Z is unique in that it can merely be a placeholder to keep the model at five characters, or it can mean data port outputs, if the device indeed has data ports. For example, from the previous screen, we saw that a model was called the 904ZZ, 904ZZ. First, we know it has to have all of the features of the basis family, CobraNet, DSP, and amplifier control and monitoring. We also know it has no analog inputs, the zero in the name. Therefore, the first letter Z is merely a placeholder. But the device has 16 channels of analog outputs, the number four multiplied times four. Since it has amplifier control and monitoring, the nine tells us this in the series number, then it must have data ports. Therefore, the final Z means data ports. It is not a placeholder. Oh, by the way, the 16 channels of analog outputs are represented as eight data ports for a 904ZZ, since each data port carries two channels of analog audio to the amplifier. Take a look at this chart again. See if you can determine the features of two other models, a 520UZ and a 914LZ. Here we see a chart showing all 11 basis derivative models we currently ship. They are called derivatives again because they were all derived from the same design platform of the basis. They are grouped by model series. The top seven are specifically called basis because they have data ports for their outputs. One basis model in particular, the 722AZ, does not have CobraNet. Remember the previous chart? The only way to get a 7 for this, for this series is to add 4 plus 3. So it doesn't include a 2 for CobraNet. The last three in the list are designated as RAVE models since they closely align with our legacy RAVE devices which we've made for years. The legacy RAVE units were merely CobraNet I.O. boxes, while the new models add full DSP along with relays, logic I.O., and omni ports. One lone unit, fourth from the bottom, is the DSP-322UA. This is very much like our DSP-3 and DSP-4 and DSP-30 devices that we've made for years. It is essentially an 8-in by 8-out DSP box with no CobraNet and no data ports to control and monitor the amplifiers. Notice the middle column all of the units, no matter what the model designation or I.O. capability, use the exact same DSP engine circuitry. This allowed us to use common parts and circuit board design layouts for all of the units without having to design, build, and stock different circuit boards for different models. This kept our costs and therefore your costs down.